This video was made possible by Storyblocks. Improve your videos with free stock footage, images, and graphics for seven days by using the link in the description. If you ask an American, the northernmost town in the world is probably Toronto, Canada. If you ask a Brit, it's Edinburgh, Scotland. But for everyone else, the northernmost town in the world is somewhere here. But instead of just telling you I'm going to beat around the bush for four minutes so I can turn this into a video. Now, if you watch my other channel, Wendover Productions, you know that I went to the northernmost town in the United States, Barrow, Alaska, which is decently big by Arctic standards. About 5,000 people live there, making it the largest Arctic city in North America. But North America really doesn't have Arctic cities. But if you draw a line this way, you get to Tromso, Norway, which is pretty much at the same latitude as Barrow, but over 70,000 people live there. Part of it is because Tromso is warmer by on average 10 to 15 degrees than Barrow, thanks to the Gulf Stream. You can tell from pictures that Tromso is significantly more hospitable than Barrow, and so it has a big tourism industry that sustains its economy. But if you draw another line this way, you get to Murmansk, Russia. Because logic and sensibility doesn't exist in Russia, over 300,000 people live in this town, which is not quite as scenic as Tromso. Despite being over 600 miles north of Helsinki, Finland, Murmansk has a larger population than the Yukon, the Northwest Territories, Nunavut, and Greenland combined. For some perspective, if Murmansk was in North America, it would be 2,000 miles north of New York. That's a four-hour flight. But still, there are plenty of towns further north. One of the most notable is Longyearbyen on Svalbard. Svalbard is part of Norway, but only kind of. You see, it's sovereign Norwegian territory, but it has some pretty unique laws. Back in the 1920s, after years of dispute over land rights, a bunch of countries got together and signed the Svalbard Treaty. It said that Svalbard was Norway's land, but any country that signed the treaty had the right to go and mine or fish or engage in any other commercial activity on the archipelago. That's why Svalbard has places like Barentsburg, a mining town with an almost 100% Russian population. It's also home to this place, a Russian consulate which is the northernmost diplomatic mission in the world. Because of this treaty, Svalbard is also an entirely visa-free area. Anyone from any country can live and work in Svalbard for as long as they want with no visa at all. Longyearbyen is also surprisingly connected for being so far north. Its airport has multiple daily flights down to Oslo and also holds the title of being the northernmost commercial airport in the world. So Longyearbyen is pretty much the northernmost place that you can easily get to. You could literally start your day on top of the world in Svalbard and end it in Newark, New Jersey. Not that you'd want to, of course. But at this point, we need to split the settlements into two categories, public and private. You see, there's real use to being in the Arctic for both military and meteorological reasons. For example, the US's northernmost military base is Thule Air Base in Greenland, which primarily serves as a radar site to detect ballistic missiles coming over the North Pole. There are also places like Nord Greenland, a weather station with a permanent population of four, and Alert Canada, the northernmost permanent settlement in the world. This place is so far north that it would actually be faster to fly over the North Pole to Mongolia than it would be to fly to Washington, D.C. It's so far north that the sun is down for four full months in the winter and up for four full months in the summer. Alert is closer to the North Pole than it is to any other Canadian town. Although, the settlement primarily serves as a military and research base situated to defend Canadian sovereignty of the High Arctic, so it is not a public settlement. You can't just decide to move there, so it cannot be called the northernmost town in the world. So, slightly further south is the northernmost town in the world, the northernmost place that you can move to with no permission, Nualsund on Svalbard. The town only has a permanent population of about 35 people, but it's a real functioning place. It even has the northernmost post office in the world, and since it's on Svalbard, it has zero visa requirement, meaning you can literally just go and move there tomorrow. So, if you get tired of civilization and stupid YouTubers and just want to get away from it all, this is your place. Or you could move there and become a stupid YouTuber, but first you'll want to get a Storyblocks account, because there is no better place to get high quality, properly licensed stock footage, video, and graphics. 
Since I started YouTube nearly two years ago, I've downloaded 1,080 video clips from Storyblocks. You'd pay a traditional stock footage provider over $50,000 for that many clips, but with Storyblocks, it's just $149 a year. But if you sign up using this link, you can get a seven day free trial and download hundreds of clips, images, and graphics for free. If you make YouTube videos, there really is no reason why you shouldn't at least give Storyblocks a try using this link and you'll be supporting the channel while you're at it.